Alex Dermer, and we asked him why birds are so important for the ecosystem. Birds perform such an amazing array of activities for us, generally um, whether it's decomposing through carrion and e or eating of carrion such mm -hmm. as vultures, um, whether it's uh, helping us pollinate plants and actually it, with control of um, insects and such as well, so things that people think of as pets or as pests, so whether it's locusts or anything like mm -hmm. that, that's where insectivores come into play as well. So I mean the amount of things that birds actually do do for us it's incredible, really. Overlooked, like you said, but they're really cool things. Now, I know you guys have been working at Nature Cast on a documentary recently uh, on birds, the birds of Makuleke, if I'm not mistaken. Tell us, tell us about this area first, and why did you then decide to have a look at the birds there? Um, well, Makuleke area is in the northern part of the Kruger Park. Um, the Kruger Park has around 420-odd species of birds um, and a lot of them are actually found within the northern part of the Kruger so some of those birds in the northern Kruger are actually found in their southernmost uh, parts within Africa such as racket-tailed rollers um, and then there's also really rare birds such as pearl-spotted owls and uh, fishing owls and, um, and the such so mm. the Kruger obviously being such a, an amazing place as it is and the birds thereof um, it was just great just to show a little bit about some of the birds that we'd seen and actually got some footage of. They're quite hard to get footage of, understandably, though. Yeah, some incredible pictures we see on screen now with the birds that we often, we often overlook. Just, just talk to us about the threats that our bird life face day to day. Uh, humans are now playing a significant role uh, in destroying their habitat, is that as simple as that, or, or have we even a, even a more active role in the, in, the, in the threat to bird life? Yeah, it really is as simple as that, whether it comes down to set, for things such as industrialization and chemicals going into rivers, for example, um, bad uses of insecticides or just mm. power lines for certain raptors and that kind of thing, also deforestation, so the lack of big trees obviously out of wilderness areas obviously it doesn't exactly help vultures or a lot of other raptor species in mm. terms of their nesting and breeding practices either. You, you talk about uh, the threats to them, the, the power lines and the poison and, and all the kind of things that's quite natural for in our environment here in South Africa. Do, you, do we have enough of the rehabilitation programs for wild birds who, who, who get injured or, or even get trapped by us or, or even those that are poisoned for that matter. Yeah, there definitely are, there definitely are rehabilitation centers and that. I also think it's a lot has actually got to do with um, awareness of what we actually are putting back into the environment. So if you take uh, oil spills on the coastline and all of that, I mean, mm -hmm. there definitely are huge rehabilitation stations that help our penguins and our seabirds as well. And then obviously the wild birds that we like to think of in game reserves, such as Kruger Park mm -hmm. that we mentioned earlier, so whether it's poisoning of carcasses or hmm. um, just then lack of food just because of, um, of those insecticides that have been used. I must say some of the shots that you guys took out in Makileke were are just amazing and it's, it's incredible. These birds all look familiar but when you see the, the name on screen suddenly the penny drops. Oh, that's, that's what it is. Yes, brought to you by NatureCast. Quickly tell us. What should we be doing as individuals to assist in the conservation of birds if you can do so at your own home? Um. Well, yes, obviously use bad insecticides or anything like that. Obviously, it, it then goes back into the ecosystem and it affects all things, obviously, not just birds. What, what about hunting and sh shooting? Is, is that I'm sure it is a threat, but um, I don't really know too much about the hunting scene with regards to it. But yes, I'm sure that certain birds, whether they are endangered and that kind of thing, obviously, there needs to be regulations be, mm. to be put in place and they need to be adhered to. So... Um, yeah, when we think about it in that terms, uh, it's, you just got to regulate what you are shooting mm. or if you are going out to shoot, obviously you rather shoot for the pot, don't shoot for the wall kind of yeah. thing. Um, same with any kind of hunting situation. In, in North Africa, there, there are real concerns about the amounts of birds that's being hunted because I think in Arab countries, they eat any bird, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not...
like in South Africa? So waterfowl and, and other birds, I mean, there was a whole thing within Mozambique a couple of years ago where wild birds were being traded and obviously eaten in two. Mm. Um, and like I said, it's obviously awareness of, of your diet and what you are actually going to be consuming. Yeah. Um, Everyone likes to eat duck and everyone likes to eat turkey too. So, I mean, if we just, if we're careful about it and then we manage exactly what is out there and how we go about doing these things, yeah. then there shouldn't really be a problem. We're all here to live the same life, evidently. So we're all part of the same thing in the world. So we've got to do it. A new study, scientific studies, says that parrot true point um, and that's mostly because of the wild and exotic bird trade so regardless if it's in the Amazon or through the Congo Basin with African grey parrots um, in Australia I'm sure they also have issues mm. of it um, and it's these birds going on to an illegal black market um, trading system for mm. collectors or whoever it may be um, and awareness really needs to be created around these things and I know that there's an article that's coming out today or so about um, African grey parrots being risen up on the CITES list mm -hmm. because of that and because of their trade. So we need, to, we need to think about this and we need to actually, we need to be careful with what we actually are doing. Now, of course, we're heading into winter. Uh, birds are migrating, but some are staying behind. Uh, talk, to, talk to us a little bit about which birds will be leaving and, and, and what birds we can still be on the lookout for you in winter. Okay, cool. Um, so... Well, specifically in the Kruger area, we have around 200 birds that, uh, that migrate in and out of South Africa. So there's birds such as Amur falcons, European bee eaters, the white storks, obviously. Mm. And some of them go as far as into Asia, some into Europe, some to the Ukraine. Um, and it's amazing to think that these birds, obviously, they have to have feeding stations on the way. And these areas obviously need to be conserved too. So there's certain swallows yeah. that only stop off at certain oasises within the Sahara and all of that mm. as well on their way back all the way through. Well, that, of course, was an interview that we did yesterday with NatureCast and Alex Dermer, who uh, was telling us why birds are so important in the ecosystem. Now, moving on to a topic related to today's theme. We are raised to believe that...